Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Committee of Adjustment. This is a meeting to consider applications for minor variance and consents that's held under the authority of the Planning Act of Ontario. Please keep in mind the intent of our process is to review the proposal that's before us, listen to all the evidence, and then make a decision. The process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or other organizations. If a request for a deferral is made this evening and the committee grants such a request, the committee, after consultation with our secretary treasurer, will set a new hearing date. No further notice will be provided unless there are changes to the application. In order to conduct an effective and efficient hearing, we've adopted the following process. The owner or authorized agent will be given the opportunity, if so desired, to briefly explain to us the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise out of the hearing. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for this presentation. You need to state your full name and address for the record, and any material submitted to the committee for viewing will remain the property of this committee, and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of this committee. All persons attending the hearing this evening who wish to support or oppose an application must also state their full name and address for the record. A maximum of five minutes will be provided to make a presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the uh, chair of the committee, and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of this committee. If there are several speakers that share the same view, we ask that you please select a spokesperson to present the group's combined opinion. We want to hear all the views, however, covering the same points will not uh, advance uh, the matter. The owner or agent will then be provided with a further five minutes to respond to any comments made by any interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the owner or agent has any questions or concerns found in the staff report, particularly with any proposed conditions, this will be your opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken to committee for decision and that will mark the end of all presentation and discussion. Once the committee makes an oral decision, any person desiring a copy must file with the Secretary Treasurer at this hearing a written request for notice of decision, and we provided green sheets in the back that you ask that you fill out and uh, leave with us before you depart the hearing this evening. Please note that you must make your written request in order to be included on the list that is used by the Ontario Municipal Board for the giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice of our decision will be mailed not uh, not uh, later than 10 days for a minor variance and 15 days for consents to the applicant, the owner, and our agent, and any other person who filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the Ontario Municipal Board. The last day to appeal the decision to the Ontario Municipal Board will be noted on the decision itself. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding. The secretary treasurer will then notify the applicant or the agent through written correspondence. The people attending the committee meeting this evening are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and other people in attendance this evening. And please note that tonight's meeting will be uh, live streamed and available for future viewing on the town's live stream uh, webpage at oakville.ca backslash live. We ask that all cellular phones and pages be switched off during the duration of the meeting. Thank you. Okay, is there, uh, there's one regret this evening, Mr. Mark Charlebrock cannot be present. Is there any uh, members uh, here this evening that wish to declare any pecuniary interest? See none. Okay, uh, is there anyone here this evening that wishes to either request a deferral or withdraw of an application? Deferral or withdraw an application? Okay, so, sir, you're first. Mm -hmm. Members, Mr. Chairman, Graham Barrett, 22 Close Avenue, agent for the owners of 518 Stafford, CAVA 014-2017. Okay, CAV 14-2017 at 518 Stafford Drive. Uh, yeah, it's clear from the town's comments that a uh, deferral is necessary to address concerns from Halton Conservation. Uh, designers advised me he was under the impression that moving the house forward on the lot would address these concerns, um, but it was not enough, so we are seeking a variance for the front yard setback, um, but we'd like to defer to address those concerns. Having met with planning quite some time ago, and they were in support of the variance, which is echoing their comments, but uh, additional information is still required. So if we could come back uh, at some point in the near future, once we've dealt with conservation, it'd be appreciated. Okay, just before we go, there's anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAV 14-2017 at 518 Stafford Drive. 
Okay, seeing none. Members, you've heard uh, the reason for the consent uh, for the deferral. Is there any questions, discussions? All support of the deferral request? Okay, your matter's being deferred, sir. Uh, I don't know if we can establish a date. Do we have a date? Um, like, how confident are you can get back? I, I'm not sure how quickly they're going to move on this. The, the designers are already on top of it. I'm not sure Okay, so we'll leave it up to you to get back to the Secretary Treasurer when this matter is mature enough to come back for a hearing, and then we'll need new notice because we can't really specify a date for it today. Yep. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Someone else in the back? Yes. Members of the committee, uh, my name is Richard Mann. I'm the architect for the uh, property 2303 Devon Road, application CAVA 013-2017. Uh, we too uh, are requiring a uh, deferral to get a geotechnical assessment as required by uh, Conservation Hall. Okay, is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAVA uh, 13-2017 at 2303 Devon Road? Okay, members, any questions? Any uh, all in support of the deferral request? I'm going to post, sir, again, the same thing. We don't know how long it's going to take you. We won't assign a hearing date. We'll have to post a new notice and uh, circulate any other plans that you have. You'll be in touch with our Secretary Treasurer. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? This is a quick way to go through the agenda. So we did have uh, a deferral request. Is that correct for uh, CAV? A eleven twenty seventeen 2017 at 64 Foresight Street? Uh, correct, to Mr. Uh, Chair. Um, it was the notice deficiency for this application, so it's on the behalf of the request from the Planning Zoning Department. Okay, due to notice deficiency, this yes. matter will be deferred. Mm -hmm. Do we have a new hearing date for this? Uh, yes, uh, we do have, and the new hearing date is February 14, 2017. Okay, on Valentine's Day? Yeah. February 14th, so okay, we'll defer. Is anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAVA 11 2017 at 64 Forsyth Street? Okay, so we'll defer this matter due to notice deficiency for, to February 14th, and the other two matters that we talked about uh, will be, we'll come back when they're uh, ready for our consideration. Any further? Anyone else wishing to withdraw or defer an application? Okay, so we'll start with the first application, CAV 009 2017 at 148. Harold Avenue. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, um, members of committee. My name is Olga Ivanova. I am uh, the owner of the property 148 uh, Harold Avenue and application CVA 009 2017. Okay, good evening. Uh, we'll need a presentation on this. Uh, but uh, just before you proceed, is there anyone here this evening other than the owner agent uh, that has an interest in application CAV 009 2017 on 148 Herald Avenue? Okay, so I'm sure you read the staff report? Yes, okay, we so have. Okay, so you can uh, proceed with the presentation. Uh, can I use the... Oh, yes, yes. I, I believe it's on. Okay, perfect. Um, we'll make sure that it's on, so let's just... Uh, Okay, so you see where it says place document here? Yep. Try to do that, and then our <coughs> experts in the room in the back will try to zero in. Can everyone see? Okay. Okay, we, we made this application because we are um, applying to build a two-story dwelling, single family. We do have two young adult children. Uh, it's uh, our daughter and our son. Um, they wish to live with us, they're young professionals and they cannot afford places of their own for a while. They will be paying back their colleges and uh, uh, when we came to a uh, decision to design a house, I uh, uh, met with uh, zoning department and development department as well. We tried to design traditional home which fits in this neighborhood and also um, look and uh, appeal is uh, the one which will improve uh, our neighborhood. I just would like to point out that um, existing uh, bungalow, which is almost 100 years old, is in uh, condition that it's ready to go. Um, on the drawing, you can see that the bungalow is protruding uh, much forward, 
and uh, also it does not comply with zoning on the sides. It's very close to property line. Um, at the front, it's very close to the walkway. It also has a, a single a single garage at the back, which is not complying with the um, zoning as well and almost uh, touching the property line. Uh, when we designed a two-story dwelling, we actually kept the same uh, footprint, uh, which is th lot coverage is still 31%, exactly the same with what we have right now. But we do believe that a new house which will comply with zoning, which will give us 1.2 on each side with the same load coverage. It will clean the backyard. And also we will um, open up the corner uh, to our neighbors, which now is going really, really far forward. Um, just to show you what our, what our um, thought is, Um, this is the same drawing. It's just um, I, I made a, a line uh, at the backyard. So this is exactly what we are requesting right now. We're requesting 1.2 meter um, extension, which is 6.9% of the floor area. Um, this is the only minor variance, and it's literally four feet like this wall being pushed into our backyard. Um, we, we also looked at it that whether the house is designed with minor variants or stays under the zoning, the difference would not make any difference on the neighboring uh, properties on one side um, because there is a wall on this side on, on, on the dwelling and there's two-story house which doesn't make any negative impact or positive impact, this wall being a little bit uh, further. But this uh, four feet of the back wall to our backyard will actually open up the view uh, to other neighbors and it will give us an opportunity to have a second bathroom upstairs, which we, our son and daughter don't wanna share the bathroom. Um, there is another, drawing right here, which can show um, where the house would be if we can um, get an approval and moving the wall uh, 1.2 meters back. The appearance of the house will be exactly the same, so we will comply with all the other zoning uh, requests. And th the size, the look of the house, and the sides of the house will be exactly the same. We're to only talking about the back wall. This is the picture of, uh, of our neighbors. The house on, on this side, this is the bungalow we're talking about. Uh, we have neighbors, two stories, and our house will kind of look very traditionally, traditional and similar to the house uh, uh, next door. This is the general um, look of the neighborhood uh, in, our, in our area. And we believe that um, our house will just complement more our area. Um, I wanted to see what, um, what exactly is going on in our area. And I went around, this is the map, and I went around of this zone. So this is Herald Avenue. This is the house we're planning on building. And this is the next street on one side, another side, and on the side, this is the cursed street right here. So the pink or red on this map is uh, showing all the buildings which have two stories buildings. So there are dwellings with two stories. And when I looked at direct um, neighborhood to us, all our backyard is looking to two stories buildings. And we calculated the properties are in fact would be 15 one-story buildings to 20 of two-story buildings. Um, so we just asking for permission to build, uh, to have this variance, which is 6.9%. 
Um, we do know that one of our neighbors wrote a letter, but for some reason they are under the impression that we are asking for 16% increase, which is not correct. We're asking for 6.9. We also heard that one of our neighbors got approval for 8.6%. Recently, the house was built. It doesn't look massive. It just fits exactly in the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, I think what that gentleman is saying that you are going from 43 to 49.9. It's not a 6.9. It's a 17, 17% or 16% of 43 is 6.9 or 7%. 6.9%. And yeah, six point, now you're going from 43% to 49.9. Yeah. That increment is 16%. 7 over 43 is 16 Maybe 15%. It's 6.9% increase. 6.9 divided by 43 is 16%. Sorry, I probably didn't. Okay. Anyway. I apologize. It's just, it's just mathematics, and we yep. don't make decisions just based on math. Uh, members, any questions at the moment? Is anyone here that has an interest in application CAV uh, 009-2017 at 148 Herald Avenue? Okay. Um, any questions? See, I think what, can you put that map up again? Yes. So 156 Herald, which is immediately to your, to the, see there, staff are saying there's a distinction between the second story that's built into the roof line versus the second story that's proposed. You know, you can see clearly, you, you had the picture, you showed a picture of that. I can put I, up I think, the picture. Yeah, if you, if you put that picture back. No, no, the other one. The other picture. This one? That one. So you see the house in the middle? See how the second story is built in the roof line? It, and yes. And see the, the house to the right? See how it's, it demonstrates as a clear two-story? Yes. That's what staff are saying, that, that uh, <coughs> it doesn't have the compatible transition. What do you have to say about that? Um, this is our direct neighbor right here. This right. is our direct neighbor, and we will be building on this side. On the other side is still bungalow next to us. If we need to make any design changes to the roof line, if engineer uh, will say that this is possible, we don't really mind, and we will take any um, advice from development department. Okay, any questions? Okay, we'll take this matter to committee and issue a decision. Thank you. Thank you. Members, who would like to move a recommendation? Oh, I did have a question. Sorry. So you know how you showed that diagram and you said if we were to uh, eliminate uh, 1.2 meters in the rear, you yeah. can comply with zoning and the build form in the front. Have you considered not just that, but uh, consider the combination of maybe um, shortening the sides a bit and the rear to make it fit. Like, have you looked at all options, including the building? We looked at all the options. If we're going to uh, make building sh uh, well, it'd be a combination. thinner. It would be a combination of not just uh, the one side, the other side, and a little bit in the front, a little in the back. In other words, not all from the rear. How would that affect your design? We are complying on both sides. If we gonna narrow the building, then garage will take most of the half of the first floor. So there will be no, the living room will become very skinny and long. So it won't be even um, desirable for family to sit around because it would be very small space. Um, it's not a big house, it's uh, 24, so, so 1.2 meters by the width of the house. What was the width of the house? I guess your argument is, if I was to comply with zoning, you would still get the same appearance in the front in terms of massing. Absolutely. Staff are saying, while well, they understand that, when you come forward on the variance, they're permitted to assess all the merits, including, you know, it's not just based on one test or, or a math exercise, it's also based on impact. And they're saying that the built form 
given your next door neighbor has an impact. That's why I, I was asking that you, you uh, said, well, if you take 1.2 meters off the rear and the width of the house is, uh, I can't find it quickly, but whatever the width is, you made that calculation. But I'm saying, well, what, what happens if you were to take, you know, a little bit off one side, a little bit on the other side, and a little bit in the back, would not achieve the same thing, and you could probably do it as of right. Unfortunately, it would not because the, the size of the property is 40 feet by 120 feet. So 40 feet um, width, um, if we take from the sides, then again, garage on the main floor, one car garage will take most of the um, main floor width. So the, the room will be will become very skinny um, and would not have a functionality as a living room. Okay, thank you. Any questions arising from that? All right, we'll take this matter to committee and we'll give you a decision. Thank you. Members who would like to move a recommendation? Yes, Ms. Bikal. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to give this a go and uh, Thank you. open the floor for a discussion. Um, before, before the meeting tonight I, and after the site visit, I was more inclined to um, agree with, the, with staff that the resulting house is going to dominate the streetscape, which was very modest uh, from what I saw and um, that the design did not really take into account um, things that they could have done to uh, mitigate that. While I recognize that um, the applicant does have a right to build a two-story two home, um, there are things that they could have done. Um, after hearing the applicant and um, I was more swayed um, that the resulting house would, would, would look exactly the same and um, if the variance was not before us and if they went back and just chopped off um, a meter or so from the rear that the result would still be um, the drawings that we see before us um, without um, any deficiencies. So I, I'm more inclined to um, put a motion on the table to um, approve this application as set before us and um, with the st our standard conditions um, that I can read on record but then have uh, the floor open for discussion that um, approval would expire within two years if the date of decision has not been um, the proposal of development has not proceeded and or a building permit not issued and that the the, um, the, um, the construction proceed in accordance with the drawings as submitted to us uh, here in um, their dated um, oh right here um, December 8th. Okay, thank oh, you. Thank you. So recommendation is to approve subject to those two conditions, two years and subject to the plans at December 8th. Discussion on recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? Anyone opposed? No, okay, so that's- Who's opposed? Uh, oh, okay. Huh? No. We were all in Sorry. support. What did I miss? No, I thought I missed someone. Oh. <laughs> Okay. So your application is being approved, subject to those two conditions. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll move forward with application CABA 010-2017 at 1245 Pine Grove Road. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Darren Sanger-Smith, I'm the agent for the owner, Martian Sliz. 
Okay. Uh, let's see if there's anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAV A uh, 10 of 2017 at 1245 Pine Grove Road. See none. Members, you've done your site visit. You've read the staff report and you understand the application. Is there any items of clarification? Anything? Any questions? Sir, is there anything you wish to add to the application? Uh, not at this time. Thank you. Okay. Well, this is your only time. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we'll take this land to committee. Our procedural bylaw allows us to dispense with a full presentation where it warrants. Who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Talowski, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I move this application be approved as applied for, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act, noting that there's no opposition from the community and would make that subject to the development proceeding in general accordance with the drawings provided and that a permit issue within two years. Any discussion or recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? No one oppose your application being approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll move forward to application CAVA 016 at 2017 151 Tresina Drive. The owner agent. Good evening, sir. Name and address for the record. Yeah, my name is Stephen Hamlin. Address is 145 Lakeshore Road East, Oakville, Ontario, L6J1H3. Okay. Uh, is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAV 13 2017? Okay. Are uh, you here general interest or you have concerns? Your neighboring property? Okay, so we'll ask you for a presentation, sir. Sure. Hey, good evening, committee staff and all in attendance. The various requested is an increase in the maximum residential floor area ratio for detached dwelling. The zoning bylaw allows 32% of the lot area, which equals up to 408.71 square meters. Variance requested is an increase to 35.01% of the lot area, equaling 447.09 meters squared, an increase of 3.01%. Through the variance meetings with Kate Milovich of planning, we have reduced the max residential floor area to an acceptable percentage. We also discussed reducing the massing of the house to reduce the impact to each, each next door neighbor by lowering the soffit in strategic areas to minim minimize the massing. So, so just, just for clarification again, it's not a 3% increase. The delta between what you ask and what's permitted is 3%, but 3% over 32 is roughly a 10% increase. Not that the math matters, but we've got to get it right. All right. Do you follow? I follow. Yeah. And you agree? I agree. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so the massing to each neighbor, so the, on the right side here, we reduce the soffit height drastically on this side to mitigate the massing um, to this neighbor's front, uh, front yard. And on this portion over here, we minimize uh, the massing by lowering the soffit for the backyard to this neighbor over here. Which one got deferred? So this is to the neighbor on the left. Uh, this is basically the gray room portion. We brought down the soffit just to uh, minimize the massing on that side. And this being the neighbor, um, their view on the right, since this is the portion of the house they will see in their front yard, we've also brought down the soffit, lowering it from the top to minimize the impact. The planning has also requested that we preserve the ginkgo tree in the front of the property. I would like to submit a revised site plan and arbor support if you don't already have that. We, we do have a revised site plan that we received. Okay. Members, do you have that in your uh, package of materials? Okay. In conclusion, we believe that we've met the four tests of the Planning Act and feel the variance applied for is minor in nature. Thank you for listening. Okay, and we do have the... Uh, the uh, forest report or the tree report so that was filed I think in an email 
through Mr. Chair, we got the plan. Of, um, we have an email that says uh, the report will be revised according to the direction with the tree preserve. I, I do have a copy of it if you if I can I submit had, it. I had the plan, and uh, we don't have. I don't. I, mean, I haven't seen the tree report, so you'll file yeah. it with us. Any questions? <coughs> See none at the moment. Okay, so have a seat, sir, not too far, and then we'll invite the, the neighbors here to come and express what they are concerned about. So this is the report that's been revised or has been revised? Has been revised. Okay. Members, you wish to see it, or should we just put it on the file and note that it's been received? Okay. Yes, sir, name and address for the record. Hi, my name is uh, Vito Racanelli. I live at uh, 157 Tresina Avenue with uh, my wife, Anna, and our two children. Um, we have lived there for about six years and um, I speak on behalf of both of us. So I just want to thank the committee for the opportunity to provide input and also for their service to the town that we all love and enjoy. So um, we love the property and the neighborhood very much. Um, the biggest driver for us in moving to this neighborhood uh, six years ago uh, was in fact the privacy and, and, and most of the, it really there's three issues that I want to talk about. Um, that has to do with privacy overlook and damage to this hedge that you see up here in front of you uh, as a result of construction or the actual uh, house itself uh, in terms of the uh, shade that it would that it, that it may impose on that uh, on that area so um, we definitely have concerns with the requested variance as it allows a larger house to be built and the proposed plan on the website would have significant impact on our privacy and our quality of life and enjoyment of the house um, so I'll explain our concern, and I have a few photos too, if that's okay, to explain it as well. So privacy is the principal reason why we moved to Coronation Park. Um, since moving, we put in a pool in the back, making privacy even more of a priority to us, especially in our backyard. We landscaped immediately after moving in uh, to accentuate the privacy um, on our, from our side neighbors, and, uh, and it was considerable cost to us. It was over 150000 just in the back, and that was back in 2011. About $20,000 of this was spent on creating this hedge that you see here um, uh, between these two properties to provide, and this has benefited from an additional five years of, of maturation. Um, and this is what, the, uh, what it looks like from our side of the house. I don't have any pictures from the other side. And this is what it looks like from the kitchen. Okay, and you can see that um, it's not ideal. The cedars that I showed you previously here provide excellent privacy both in summer and the fall um, but we could not plant the cedars all the way along this area because of if for any of you know cedars need a lot of water and sunlight and they don't grow well because of the shade that's being created by the existing house as well as the limited space we have uh, through the root ball so we had to compromise and we had to put in something else uh, which provides pretty good um, privacy in the summer but not so much in the winter as you can see these shots were taken a couple of days ago um, this is not a huge issue with the present house due to its current size and the fact that the side of the existing house has no windows, which brings us to my first concern. So the proposed plan actually doubles the length of the house on our side. Uh, this is what the same you would look like in the winter if this house was built. So this is what we would see. Uh, it's kind of a, our hedge only goes up to about here, so we would see the top of the house going backwards, but you can see that the, this is quite different from what we're looking at here, right? In terms of, in terms of our biggest concern, which is privacy. Um, so in, in addition to staring at this bigger, taller house, it will now have five windows and two doors, which uh, if current trends show, most people put windows on doors now, uh, looking directly into our eating area, kitchen, and part of our family room. So uh, we believe from the, we're not obviously our architects and we haven't had a tremendous amount of time uh, to plan or, or to get any consultation, but we believe it may be possible to move the house forward by two meters, and I can show you later why I believe that is, but I don't want to waste my time on that. Uh, the window situation is dramatically improved if the house is moved forward even two meters with a reduction in windows from five to three. So this is what it looks like where the house currently is going to be situated, again, according to my estimates, and this is what it would look like afterwards. So it's not a huge difference, but you can see that there's just a few less windows which would matter to us. 
Um, so therefore, our first request or recommendation is that as a condition of approval and before a building permit is issued, that the location of the proposed home be moved forward as much as possible. Uh, and that the number of windows on our side of the house be reduced, if that would be possible, and that the plans be modified to ensure that the doors facing uh, this area of concern have no windows. Um, so the second uh, two points have to do with protecting the hedge that's so important to us and to our privacy and enjoyment of the house. The proposed house plan at its current length will impact the amount of sunlight on the cedars and orange beams. And the cedars are especially vulnerable. Um, so I'll just show you that again. So this is the, the, the house that exists, obviously, and the proposed house would be approximately go to about this length, right? So obviously that's going to create shade and it could compromise uh, the cedars, which we're mostly concerned about, but also uh, the horn beams. Uh, um, so that's, that's the first thing. Um, the space between the two houses widens, though, uh, as you move towards the rear of the house, as the architect showed. I'll just show you a picture of that, and I'll tell you in a minute why. So this is, the gr this is our house on this side. Sorry, it's a little tricky. That's our house here. So this is that deck that you saw. And you can see that the garage, um, that after the garage, it's widened. So if the house was moved slightly forward, it, and this is the existing hedge, it would actually allow for more sunlight to be on the hedge. And if the sunlight is on the cedars, it's more likely that uh, the cedars uh, will be okay and, and exist. So our first point has to do with the amount of sunlight and it just basically reinforces our request to have the house move forward as, as, as far as possible, if that could be done. Um, and by the way, obviously uh, protecting this hedge is a mutual benefit to both us and our new neighbors, which we look forward to meeting uh, eventually. Uh, and in our last point, I'm just finishing up now, has to do with protecting our hedge from the effects of the construction. So the current plant does not have tree hoarding protection for this hedge, which extends basically from here to here. Oh, you can see it actually, it's quite remarkable, a little device there. Um, if a tree was damaged, this would cost approximately $2,000 per tree to replace, but the trees would not be as tall as the current trees and we would never truly be able to reestablish the privacy we built as the hedge has now matured five years. So I'll just show you the, again what we're talking about here. So these are now approximately 20 feet high these are about 16 feet high. So we're very lucky to have this. This actually goes on even a little bit further. But obviously, if you damaged one or two of those and replaced them, the replacement would maybe only go up to maybe like that. To do, to do something that big, it would be almost impossible to, to ensure that it would survive based on, on my experience, but we could get the opinion of a, a professional. Um, so therefore we would like to the town to ask for a tree hoarding for this entire area here. Um, and we would also want to assure that no dirt from existing, from the excavation be anywhere near two meters of our property line along this hedge. Um, we have uh, lived here for six years, seen a number of homes being constructed and seen trees uh, dying off as a result of the weight of the, the dirt once excavated. So we've seen that it's, people think it's the tractors, but we talked to an arborist who told us it's actually the weight of the, of the dirt that's sitting there until they can move the dirt back. Um, so we'd want some assurances around where the dirt will be placed for excavation. In addition, as a condition of approval and before a building permit be issued, that the builder and I, my wife and I, come to a written agreement as to financial compensation, should there be any damages to the hedge as a result of construction or, and I would say even two years after construction as the damages may not be evident immediately. And this is, has to do principally with this hedge, as I mentioned. We need this to ensure that we can mitigate the impact of construction and at least attempt to reestablish our privacy if any of the trees are injured. And obviously if no trees are damaged, there would be no compensation necessary. That's Sir, really you've asked end. for a lot of conditions. Have you written them down so we can see them? There's some of this, some of those conditions simply cannot be, uh, uh, managed by this committee by way of decision. Okay. Uh, like we can't force someone to enter into a contract with you and certainly we can't ask someone to compensate you if something goes wrong. It's like leaving our decision and discretion of others. Our decision needs to be final and binding. Have you had a chance to speak to your neighbor about these things? Oftentimes that's what happens and they reach agreement before they come here. Uh, no, I haven't. I'm not sure that the people currently living in the house are in fact the owner. Well, 
but, but you haven't attempted to reach out to make contact with whoever the applicant is to see if these, some of these conditions can be fulfilled. Uh, put that aside, there's a bunch of other conditions about hoarding and uh, dirt placement and things like that that are uh, normally uh, all the time reviewed through the site alteration permit. I would encourage you, uh, you'll, you can have these minutes of this meeting or you can review the tapes again because they're live streamed and you can get those points that you made to us to the right body that reviews these applications during site alteration permit and ask that they be considered in the context of that review. Uh, our responsibility is to assess based on the four tests and in some instances it may be appropriate to attach conditions other times it's not like uh, you've recommended that the building be moved forward a bit and we'll explore that with the applicant but when you suggested that moving forward a bit have you analyzed whether it would trigger other variances like uh, front yard well you do, it's, you again do a I line there you, you had a line that was diagonal and it had a like this one? It, right yeah so like I'm just but again this is an estimate based on uh, this house here uh, and looking at the street and just drawing a parallel line. It appears that there may be an opportunity, but yeah, again, don't, I'm not... I don't know offhand what the minimum setback requirements are, whether that design would trigger a different set of variances and whether those other variances may or may not be supported by others or maybe staff, I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know. But you again, haven't had an independent assessment of the zoning to see if that would solve... It might solve one concern, but it may trigger another. You haven't done that assessment? Um, no. Okay. Well, we'll ask the agent. Any questions? Okay, thank you for your thorough presentation. Can I, can I ask a question because I'm not entirely sure exactly sure. what you said. Yeah. So what you're saying is that, um, so, 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 um, so a sign was put up saying that there uh, is a variance and it has to do mostly with the 10% increase in square footage that you mathematically correctly pointed out. Right. So... <laughs> Yeah, so, 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 so there is no height variance, there's no setback variance, right. there is no coverage variance. Right. Uh, you know, the bylaw contains uh, various regulations. The only regulation that this project doesn't meet is the maximum gross floor area, which is tied into the size of the lot, 33%, right. or I mean, th yeah, so, 30%. Yeah, so what, so what is So basically, the... we're, he's looking for 400 square feet, more yeah. than what the bylaw would permit. Right. Okay. So what is the op so what is and I didn't clearly understand because again I'm not a builder and I'm yeah, not yeah, an sure. agent. So what is the um, site alteration permit? Is that what you're asking about? Well, what is yeah? What is the vehicle for me to to voice? So my that's concerns? the engineering department. Every yeah. site needs to go through a detailed engineering review, yeah. and as part of that, they require a permit before they start digging or moving dirt around. Okay. So they have to ensure that uh, you know the uh, the proposal has appropriate drainage and. Uh, they'd look at uh, tree implications and soil movement, and that would be the department I would encourage you to engage. And Mr. Charles McCall can correct me if I'm wrong. He's a planner with the town of Oakville. Uh, uh, that's the process where you would write those concerns in or maybe even stop in to see the appropriate officials to say that you were at the committee, you've expressed these concerns, and you were requested to engage their department to ensure that they're considered as part of the context of a site alteration permit, whether it's done as of right or whether it's done by way of a variance. Every project that gets built requires a site alteration permit. So regardless of our decision tonight, you should uh, make yourself, avail yourself of that opportunity. Mm. Mr. McConnell, is there anything else you wish to add to that? Is that a fair sort of summary? Mr. Chairman, that is a uh, fair assessment, absolutely. The gentleman can uh, uh, consult with our development engineering department and find out the, the, the mechanism in which he can ensure that these issues are addressed through that process. So the things that I mentioned, I guess the only thing that would be in scope of this committee would be the possible movement of the house forward? Right. I mean, um, th correct. That, that would be one of many different options. Uh, usually we don't, uh, uh, at least during my tenure, we haven't required someone to enter into a, a compensation agreement or a landscaping agreement. Uh, the project uh, meets the four tests or it doesn't. Right. Uh, and usually those, those type of things are normally and incidentally addressed prior to the matters come to committee or part of the continuum of discussion with your budding property owner. I'm sure 
they too would like to preserve those trees, at least if I was in their position, wanted to preserve those trees for the exact same reasons that you expressed. Right. Okay. So can we, can we hear? Uh, yeah, we're going to get answers. About I that? just Thanks. want to make sure you had the opportunity to get your answers on your questions on the floor. Sir, I, I think what um, the general was saying that two things, one, you can move the building forward, or even if you were to flip it, if you were to flip the building the other way around, uh, you, can you leave your diagram up there, sir? You had all, all that, unfortunately, that all that stuff that you showed us becomes our property now. So, <laughs> so we're going to need to see it. But uh, that one diagram you had with the diagonal and you had an area. Yeah, this one here. See the opportunity that you could even flip the, the building around if it made sense. But, but uh, the suggestion is that you can move it forward a bit and they would see less of your windows in their, in their sight line. Yeah, unfortunately, if we did move the house forward, um, we would be breaching the front yard setback. Um, and not only that, is, uh, there would be a complication that it could impact actually to the neighbor to the right side as well. So it might be satisfying the neighbor like to our left, but to the right it might be a, a whole other slew of arguments. Okay. Um, we did, when we did look at positioning the house on this property, we did take the trees into account, the neighboring trees. Um, in this zoning, uh, one side, uh, on one side yard setback needs to be 1.2 meters and the other side yard setback to, is, can be uh, up to 2.4 meters. Um, so we did, we did decide to keep the 2.4 meters on uh, the neighbor's side um, to mitigate the damage. Uh, and I the see trees. You, not, you put a notch in the side of the building to increase that setback to 4.29 meters as well. Well, it was, it was to increase the side yard setback. It was also, and this is also where we lowered the soffit as well. Um, and, and that, again, was to mi mitigate the impact, and minimize about, the impact, sorry, what about uh, the on windows? this neighbor. Sorry? The windows, the openings? Uh, it, there was no... I, what I, type I, of bedroom? There's the bedrooms in there in the top two levels? And Let me try. On the left elevation, yep. I believe. Okay. No. Well, to a point. So, the first section here in the back, I don't know if you can really see that. The first section here in the back, this is the great room. So, this is where we lowered the soffit. Right. Um, then we have, a, we have a bit of a sitting room with a rail to look over it. We do have a window on that side. Um, that does look o over there. We do have a bit of a, like a corner there. This is pretty far away from, you know, we have the eight foot setback here and this is probably about 16 feet that's to this point. So it's pretty far back. Then we have our laundry room area and then we have a bathroom. And then in the front of the house is where we have the bedroom. Right, so those, uh, those three openings on the upper floor, one is for the seating area, which is a uh, recess back. One is a lot, uh, the bathroom. Yeah, and, one's and then yeah, the other right. one's the bedroom. Correct. Okay. Any questions? What is the front yard setback supposed to be exactly? The required setback is 10.28 meters, and we are at 10.33 meters. Okay. So we can, we can move the house up about six inches. Okay. Any Thank you. Questions? Anything, anything to add in response to what you heard? No, I mean, uh, we, are you in agreement with the site alteration permit? Yeah, I, well, we, we did have an arborist come out to the site, like we do with all the proposed houses we do. Did they assess the, uh, the road it's, spruce? It's the rule, right? Um, and there was, there was never, they didn't bring up a concern that the neighboring trees, were, that we'd impact them because of how far we were away on that side. Um, if it was, you know, closer to the one, if we had 1.2 meters on that side, I, I could understand that we may damage the root system, but being as far as we are and being there, you know, they're pretty young trees, so the root system uh, typically is as far as the canopy goes. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't see us damaging those trees. Okay. Uh, can we, uh, we'll take this matter to committee and issue a decision. Members who would like to move a recommendation.
Anyone? I need a recommendation. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hardcast. Um, having heard uh, the information uh, and reviewed the materials and heard the submissions by the uh, uh, adjacent property owner um, uh, and having reviewed the staff position on this, uh, I am satisfied that the requested variance is conformed to the four tests of the uh, Planning Act. I'll put forward a motion of approval um, subject to um, three conditions. The first being that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the site with the plans submitted as modified to preserve the ginkgo uh, tree in the front yard to the satisfaction of the director of planning services. Um, the second being that the uh, that a site alteration permit be approved uh, permitting the proposed dwelling and providing for full preservation of the ginkgo uh, in the front yard. And the third being that um, that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision. Uh, if a permit has not been issued. Um, thank you. Mr. Hartcastle, would you consider a friendly amendment to add to the second condition that the site alteration permit that addressed the ginkgo tree, uh, I was thinking as well, and the abutting row of spruce trees on the neighboring property at 157, that would be sort of a, uh, it, it would, it would, it would be considered in any event, I would think, but. I, I would agree with you, uh, Mr. Chairman, that it would be considered in any event, but I would accept that friendly amendment. So that the site alteration permit, which we said needs to be filed, be approved, permitting the proposed dwelling and to provide for full preservation of the uh, ginkgo tree in the front yard and the abutting row of spruce trees at the neighboring property at 157 Tracina. Oh, Cedars? Is it spruce and cedars? Well, we're not going to protect. Uh, we can't put every tree down, but we're. But you focused your presentation on a row of uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, row of uh, cedars trees. And the abutting uh, trees on the neighboring property at 157 Tresina. Sorry? So, Mr. Hardcastle, this is your recommendation. I was just trying to wordsmith it for you. So, if you have better wording, I'd. Uh, um, wh what I was thinking, uh, Mr. Chairman, was that it be uh, in the cedar and hornbeam he um, hedge along the. Um, co uh, common property line with 157. Along the common property line at 157. So cedar, the row of cedar trees and, and Hornby, how do you spell that? H-O-R-N-B-E-A-N? Hornbeam, beam, okay. Okay, did we catch that? Cedar, C-E-D-A-R and Hornby along the common property line. Okay, is there a discussion on that or recommendation? Okay, so the first condition is as proposed. The proposed dwelling be constructed in Jordan Court plans, preserve the, and then the site alteration permit be approved, permitting the proposed dwelling and providing for full preservation of the ginkgo tree in the front yard and the abutting row of cedar trees and hornbeam along the common property line at 157 Tracina and a three year. Mr. Uh, uh, I'm just concerned, Mr. Chair, how does a site alteration permit for one property preserve trees on another? Uh, well, it's a site know. alteration. Well, uh, Mr. McCall, is there a comment on that? McConnell? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would have to you know, unfortunately, that the appropriate staff aren't here. My understanding is uh, they do look at, you know, shoring and backfilling of, you know, foundations, and they do take into consideration uh, the trees along common property lines. That's my understanding. I could, you know, um, stand corrected upon consultation with that appropriate staff. Um, I've given my card to the adjacent owner, uh, and I can put him in touch with that staff tomorrow to better understand uh, that. Yeah. But these are, 
you know, through civil matters, there are, you know, um, afforded rights to trees that are on a neighbor's property. That's a civil matter, but those are still notwithstanding rights afforded to a property owner. So I think in combination between the, uh, the site alteration permit and private property rights, um, there should be uh, appropriate assurance there for the protection of those trees. All right, we're not looking at uh, civil matters. We just want to site alteration permit, to the best of my knowledge, must, by, by the ordinary sense, consider what's around it, including trees. That's right. So um, if there's a, move, a movement to preserve a ginkgo tree that's on property, I don't think it's out of the realm of um, possibility that it can also include anything that's on a common boundary line. At least that's my view, sir. Uh, this is a new condition that you probably mm -hmm. haven't seen, and I wanted to have no. your ability to input on that if you have anything to add. You're going to preserve them anyways. We're going to preserve them anyways. Um, so it's. I mean, I'm not the contractor. Right. So I have to assume that they're going to. But that all, all that means forward. is all that means is whoever's going to look at this from a site alteration permit knows that there is a there is a row of sensitivity to those trees and that's and, right. and it may involve hoarding or some other measures yeah, to protect them. I mean, them, the, the, tree, the trees aren't shared, right? No, they they're are, not They shared. are on their property. Yes. Uh, that should be clarified. And um, so, I mean, there is a fence there as well. Correct, yes. Right? So the, fe the fence is going to add to some protection right off the bat. Sure. Um, but I, I understand the idea is, you know, when we're so digging then, to keep so the equipment So everyone's out. happy as long as they get preserved. Yeah. All you can do is attempt, right? We don't That's know right. If, if the trees that were somehow impacted, whether it's construction or their ordinary decline in a normal course of a health of a tree. Of course. So, well, we can't uh, give assurances that they'll live forever, but at least we do whatever we can in a condition like this, which is almost non-consequential, you're gonna do it anyways. Okay, so uh, on that basis, it's a recommendation to approve subject to those three conditions. Any further discussion? See none, all those in support? No one opposed, your application is being approved to there. Sir, Thank I you. encourage you to keep in touch, um, and I'm sure there's a solution there to ensure that the trees are preserved. Thank you. Now we'll move to application CAVA 017-2017 at 2329 Devon Road. Good evening again. <clears throat> Excuse me, committee members. Graham Barrett, 22 Close Avenue, agent for the owners. Okay, uh, is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAV 17-2017 at 2329 Devon Road? Uh, this is recommended for approval subject to condition. Uh, members, you've done your site visit, you read the staff report, uh, you studied the plans, is there any items of clarification, you wish a presentation? Are you ready to proceed on the application? Sir, do you have anything to add to the application? Um, just to clarify one thing, the, the staff comments that were received um, had this written up as a new two-story dwelling, when in fact it's a second-story addition. Right. Um, there was a bit of confusion that I cleared up by emailing everybody concerned. Um, yeah, so we, we have your email. You do? Okay, good. Then yeah, no, we, I don't. We have it here. Okay, great. We read it. Then no, I have nothing to add except I do have uh, all our letters of support. Yes, we do. Okay, well, on that basis, we'll take the matter to committee. Who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Talowski, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, taking into consideration the staff comments and the significant uh, letters of support from the community, I'll recommend this application be approved as applied for, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act, make it subject to construction proceeding in general accordance with the drawings provided and that a permit issue within two years. Okay, thank you. Did you have a question? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, since the notice uh, state uh, the new uh, two-story dwelling, um, it would be appropriate for decision to have um, to permit the proposed second story addition. Right, that's as clarified, yes. So we'll make that cor uh, administrative correction on that notice. Yes, so uh, the recommendation is to approve subject to those two conditions. Any discussion? See none, all those in support? No one opposed, your application is being approved for a second story addition. Thank you kindly. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll proceed to application CAV uh, 18 of 2017 at 574 Stevens Crescent.
good evening. Good evening, sir. Can we have your name and address for the record? Yes. Uh, my name is Milo Olayar. Uh, I live at uh, 270 Dufferin Avenue, Brantford. I'm here to uh, represent the uh, owner who is also attending. Uh, we have applied for uh, um, minor variance uh, to permit uh, maximum floor area of 330.9 uh, square meters, uh, which, uh, which is 43.5% uh, uh, and allowed is 40%. Uh, uh, we believe that it's, uh, it's uh, minor variance. Uh, um, there's a few things that we would like to mention uh, in respect to uh, the application. Uh, the, the one thing is uh, the, we are aware of the, the staff report and uh, we would like to mention that existing uh, neighborhood is in a stage of transmor uh, transformation. Uh, so even the existing uh, neighborhood is of uh, one-story buildings or houses, um, the existing bylaw, zoning bylaw, fully support uh, two-story uh, buildings, and you'll see more and more of those houses uh, through the neighborhood. Uh, we have two, two existing examples of, of, of the houses uh, of similar nature. Uh, the one of them, if I, I'm not sure if it's visible, one of them is uh, right uh, to the existing uh, uh, of the property that we are, uh, it's probably a little bit dark, uh, but it's one, uh, one house right to the next uh, of the property. And uh, this is the, another example on the street uh, that represents a two-story, very similar house, what we are proposing on our property. Uh, we are maintaining all uh, setbacks, uh, requirements, and uh, any other um, zoning uh, requirements, including the height. Uh, okay, thank you. Now, another point that I would like to mention is that during the design process, we, uh, we try to design the house so, so there is at least impact uh, on the neighbors, uh, which means that we developed the house from site to, to uh, we took full advantage of the allowed setbacks on the sides and uh, made the house uh, uh, not as mm, deep as, as, as we could, which uh, allows us uh, basically the exposure to the neighbors is, is less than uh, what it would be if we basically go from uh, front to the back. Uh, another thing that we have done was uh, on the side of one of the neighbors is that we lowered uh, rear back and uh, the roof is lower on that side, uh, which I think it benefits the neighbors. Um, and then on the front elevation, we have uh, set back uh, the garage part and uh, the part above it again, like the, the, it's basically stepping the, the volume of the house, uh, which I think it helps with the massing. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention is, uh, and that's the similar case what we had um, in the beginning, uh, what we've done with the, adding the extra, uh, just one second. Okay. So what we have done in terms of adding extra fl floor area is, is in the middle of, of uh, of the house, so it doesn't impact the neighbors. Uh, so this is the area what we what we are adding. Now removing this part or, or not not going uh, uh, with this addition would have literally no uh, impact on uh, the house itself as it stands from the from the street. Uh, it would have no influence on uh, uh, unusual appearance of the house, uh, and we believe that you will see more and more houses like this one in, in, in the neighborhood uh, just because the, the zoning allows it. Uh, so that's, I, I guess, my, my uh, final point. Um, I, I forgot to mention that uh, uh, the variance is requested because the owner will be living with the, 
in-laws, and um, there is um, need for a little bit of extra space uh, for the, that uh, family. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you, sir. Any questions uh, at the moment? Let's just see if there's anyone here this evening that has an interest in the application, C of E 18, 2017 at 574 Stevens Crescent. So Mr. McConnell, uh, I, you may have not offered this report, and you might not be in a position to answer, but if I was to read the report again, it seems to suggest that there's the, the built form, the two-story. While it's permitted by zoning, it doesn't uh, meet the character of the area because most of the houses are predominantly one story. Is that? That's correct, the Mr. Chairman. The proposed dwelling is not compatible to the one story dwelling surrounding the property. Mm -hmm. So in this context, we look at compatibility in terms of what's there and not what's permitted by zoning. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Um, I just wanted to, could you show us those two pictures that you provided us previously? Oh, and do you have any information with respect to the, those two pictures in terms of um, whether there were any variances required or uh, approved for those sites? Yeah, I can show you. The, just just I, I'm, to give me some context. Sure, to I'm not sure whether, uh, whether uh, those houses required any uh, variances. Uh, what I'm trying to document that the, the, the houses that are um, built there are similar to what we are pro proposing, that they're two-story. Uh, this one is right next door. This one what you showed is two stories next to one story. Pardon? You're showing two-story built forms next to one next to one story built forms. Correct, yeah. The same here. With the same sort of si side yard setbacks, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Now this is the corner, right? Pardon? Uh, I'm I'm not sure where this one has it exactly. Well it, it has take, to be. You can see the it, bend on the road. Yeah, it's in the in the neighborhood. Uh, it was taken by my colleague, so I don't know exact location of, of this house, but I understand it's in the neighborhood. And uh, as I mentioned before, like my main argument is that, uh, well, actually there's two. The one that the neighborhood is in, in, in uh, transformation. You know, like, like you'll see more and more houses that there is two story and uh, our house will fit to that future uh, look of the, of the street uh, very easily. And uh, the second argument or, or a point is that even with that, uh, without that extra area that you're asking, the house would remain the same uh, at, at the front. It would look exactly the same, uh, okay. be just because the zoning allows it. Yeah. Uh, Any further yes. questions? Okay, thank you. We'll take this man to committee. Who would like to move a recommendation on this? No letters of opposition. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, once again, I find myself in this tug of war with what's presented before me and, and the impact that's potential um, on the streetscape. At face value, the requested increase in floor area is about 300 square feet, um, more than what the bylaw allows. And seeing the applicant's presentation, um, if we were to say, okay, well, you need to build, build within those requirements um, and um, sending him back, uh, what will come before us again is going to look exactly the same um, minus that chunk in the rear yard. And um, having gone around the neighborhood, I, I do recognize that there's a lot of new builds in the area and, and the, the, the predominant house stock is, is a one story or one and a half story. Um, but I can, I can see that um, the argument of that uh, particular design um, on the street and how it how it will fit. Um, I'm going to move a motion to um, approve the um, the um, the application as set before us um, with uh, our standard condition that uh, the approval will expire within two years from the date if the decision of the proposed development has not proceeded and/or building permit not issued. 
I'd also like to add the regular um, condition that the um, the construction uh, be in accordance with the plans as submitted um, before us, uh, and they're dated. Um, I'm always looking for the date. When I need it, I can't find it. <laughs> um, Okay, thank you. December 19th of 2016, issued for the Committee of Adjustment. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it to my colleagues if there's a discussion on this recommendation. Any discussion on recommendation? Mr. Hardcastle? Um, yeah, M Mr. Chairman, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm struggling with this one. I find that the, um, that the um, well, the neighborhood is in transition and seeing some pressures to develop I think uh, based upon my observations and and it was proven out with the examples that were shown by the applicant that the, uh, the 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 buildings that we're seeing in the area are a little bit more sensitive to the context and the relationship to the adjacent properties in terms of having a multitude of planes roof li roof lines that project down below the window line and 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 the second story is really contained up in the set um, in, in the roof line and and I think that sensitive approach to design helps to um, address uh, issues with with context and uh, I haven't found any information of, um, with respect to uh, preponderance of variances for excessive GFA in the area. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to support my colleague in this motion. Any further discussion? Well, um, I'm just going to add my thoughts for for consideration. I, I, I in this context, context, I'm not quite sure that I always agree um, with the bla blanket statement about character, but it is. Um, the zoning permits a two-story built form, and um, I, I think when we when we focus in on staff's comment that uh, they suggest that the proposed massing and scale of the dwelling unit would be out of character with the neighborhood, and then the next line suggests that the dwelling is not compatible to the one-story surrounding the property. I think those are two different tests. I think um, the proposed dwelling is within it fits the character of the neighborhood which is defined more than just the property on either side or the immediate abutting properties uh, we saw uh, video or uh, photographic evidence that uh, there is proven compatibility at least in this neighborhood between one story and two story dwellings uh, and they can coexist and they're compatible and they're within the character of the neighborhood mind you i might not find that they're compatible with the surrounding the property, meaning on either side, but I'm not quite sure those are the two same tests. Uh, but I'm comfortable in, in coming to a conclusion that definitely it meets the character of the neighborhood and there is no variance to height. So, um, and we saw the deployment of the extra GFA as for a, a bedroom on the second floor. It's almost like a projection on the side that meets the side yard setbacks. So I, I will support the recommendation. Any further discussion? Mr. Telowski. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I think I'm going to send this back to another meeting. Uh, I agree with Mr. Chair 100% what you're saying. Uh, I, I can't support the motion, but it's not for the reasons listed in the staff report. Uh, the zoning permits two story houses. Uh, the variance is not causing the this house to be out of character. Uh, but I think I'm having issues with, on this one, the issue of desirability. Earlier in the night, we saw similar type variance with uh, pictures in the neighborhood of houses that were virtually identical in design. And I had no issue with that meeting the emerging character and being desirable. Uh, the examples the applicant showed in both cases, um, there was variation in the design to try to mitigate the variance. Uh, one house had a smaller second floor than the other. The other house had a roof line that dropped down beyond the two-story walls. So, well, 
I, I don't support the reasons given in the staff report to deny this variance. Um, I myself can't find it to be desirable in that, yes, it's a two-story house is permitted. It's different than the character of the neighborhood, but this is different than the emerging character of the design of the houses in the neighborhood. Okay. I can prognosticate where this is going to go. Uh, so the recommendations to approve subject to those two conditions, all those in support, okay, and those opposed. So, gentlemen, it's up to you to move a recommendation to approve, and we know where that's going to go, or to refuse. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll put forward a, a motion to refuse on the basis that the um, application does not conform to the four tests. Um, um, in, in particular, and um, highlighting from Mr. Tolowski's comments that uh, the application is not desirable for the appropriate development of the land uh, on the basis that it is not consistent with the emerging character of the neighborhood, and uh, as such, we'll put forward a motion of refusal. Okay. Discussion on recommendation? See none. I guess uh, just for the record, uh, our comments from uh, Ms. McHale and myself in respect of uh, not supporting that recommendation will be noted. So all those in support of the refusal? Those opposed? Okay, so what we have here is a classic example of a deferral. <laughs> so we have not arrived at a decision, <coughs> and uh, then uh, we do have another member, unfortunately he's not here, and uh, we need a recommendation to defer. I guess, uh, Ms. Michael, you're gonna move that? All those in support? Okay, so this matter will be deferred. Uh, we encourage you to uh, uh, talk to the planning department, see if there's some design elements. You heard our comments here. See if there's some design elements that could be addressed in terms of um, satisfying the tests of desirability with the emerging character of the area. So if you uh, say uh, deferred uh, and you're missing one, one member, uh, how does right. it work? So this matter will come back again uh, when it's ready to come back. You, you can notify the secretary treasurer. Mm -hmm. Uh, so effectively, you, uh, you have the ability now to engage the plan department, see if uh, some of their concerns can be addressed by some design elements that you heard some discussions here today. Mm -hmm. um, and then the matter will come back for a decision. What's the timeline? Of, well, of, we can of, actually of. set a hearing date right now and for that. There's no reason why we can't do that. To, um, Mr. Chair, March 14th is now available for... March 14th. Deferral um, and in records, yeah. is it uh, deferral fees applicable or? No. No. No, waive the deferral fees on this one. It, it, it was initiated by the agent or the applicant. It was uh, as a result of our uh, decision making process. So this matter is being deferred, sir. There's no negotiations on that other than the fact we'll get you on the March 14th date. Okay. okay. Now, now we still have option to go with the existing plan if we, if we reduce the... Um, you, you can decide to not ha have a variance whatsoever and, and build and that's whatever what I mean. you can like as of right, you in, which, the in which case this matter will never come back. You can withdraw your application. Uh, but if you wish uh, to continue with the variance, whether it's this one or something else that we don't know, as part of this deferral request, you should speak to the plan department. Uh, they have a first set of comments. They'll have this presentation and they'll understand the concerns of the committee and to see if you can find a happy compromise. So, so next, uh, and I'm sorry for asking too many no, no, questions. That's fine. But like, like, so the next committee will be with, uh, with five uh, um, members or it will be again? We, like, we, are, we are hopeful. We always have quorum, but sometimes, you know, people's schedules, they do have lives outside would the Would it make sense for us to talk to that uh, missing member who, who is not here and to then- To talk to them? Yeah. No. No, you, you will talk to them through, <laughs> you will talk to them through this uh, through Because we need process. to convince one person, right, like, like in the committee. No. Yeah. No, no you, I, you, you talk to the committee as a whole. Okay. Uh, but like I said, you know, we do have lives that sometimes we have conflicts and appointments that we just cannot, uh, but 99% of the time we have a full. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is very rare, but it does happen. Yeah. So uh, we'll defer to the March 14th fixed date. You should engage a discussion with the plan department through Mr. Uh, uh, Charles McConnell or, or Ms. Uh, Kate uh, Halich, uh, who's not here. Uh, she'll be able to assist in, in sitting down and discussing this and see 
if there's a solution and then when and if the matter comes forward on the 14th but we have a slot reserved for you on the 14th perfect thanks thank you so much thank okay, you okay thank you okay we'll take uh, the last matter on the agenda that's CAVA 19 2017 this is for the property at 332 to 338 Robinson Street good evening sir name and address for the record uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just for the benefit of the committee members, um, I do wish to advise you that legal counsel for this applicant is uh, Denise Baker with okay. Greer Folds. Thank you. I did Limited. ask Ms. Baker, I have a conflict in this matter, I did ask uh, Ms. Baker uh, if there was anything on the agenda tonight uh, that would present a conflict for myself, and uh, I did not hear back, uh, so I wasn't aware, and I am uh, excusing myself. Thank you for bringing that to my attention, Mr. Capper. No problem. Thank you. Uh, can you share it for me? Thank you, Madam Chair. For the record, my name is David Capper, planning consultant with Glenn Schnarr and Associates, Inc. Our mailing address is 10 Kingsbridge Garden Circle, Suite 700, Mississauga, Ontario, postal code L5R3K6. I'm here before you this evening on behalf of the owners of the property at uh, at 332 Robinson Street uh, for, a, for a request for approval of a single minor variance for the elimination of uh, one dedicated visitor's parking space. Um, you will recall that this application is a resubmission of an application which was uh, refused by the Committee of Adjustment on October 18th of last year. Uh, that application has subsequently been appealed to the Ontario Municipal Board and we have gone back to the um, to the town and the area residents association and the abutting neighbor, um, and we've worked out uh, what we think is a is a, um, a, a revised design that keeps everyone happy um, and eliminates a number of the previous sorry two of the previous variances that were um, previously applied for. Um, the net effect is there is, the application still proposes four units, but those four units are narrower units. There's an increased uh, front yard setback so that it complies with the minimum required. And there is um, an increased setback to the rooftop terrace, as well as the rooftop terrace being completely confined within and screened by a, uh, a peak to roof design. So the, the revised design is a result of uh, numerous conversations with both the Town of Oakville uh, and the Lakeside Oakville Lakeside Residents Association and uh, Ms. Andrea Gardner, who is the owner of the property immediately to the east of this. I could walk you through the specific design elements that have been amended. Um, I note that uh, representatives from the OL OLRA, as well as the abutting neighbor, are here this evening. Um, so I'm in your hands in terms of uh, whether you require a detailed discussion of those design mm -hmm. elements. Let me just survey the room. Um, who is here uh, present for application uh, CAVA um, 019 of 2017? Are you in opposition or in support? You're supporting the application now. That's great. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Both in support. I'll uh, I'll get you to get your your names just for our records that you are in support. Um, I I'm assuming you have seen the new developments and the changes that have made throughout this time, um, sir. You're the only one remaining. I, I'm I'm assuming you're the owner. Okay, so do you need their, uh, you need their information? Um, can you just speak up so our secretary treasurer can take your information down in terms of names uh, and address? Through Madam Chair, uh, there is a green sheet you can fill out and then uh, give to me so I can have your, all your information, thank you. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so in light of uh, uh, the, um, the support that we uh, now have of this project, are there any further questions of Mr. Capra at this time? See no, no items of clarification, Mr. Capper. We're satisfied, and we're ready to take this into committee. If you uh, don't have anything else to add, uh, just uh, one point of clarification. Um, although the application is under appeal, 
um, it's the full intent of the owner of the property to withdraw that appeal pending uh, successful approval this evening and lapsing of the appeal period without, uh, without any further third party appeals. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that piece of information. Uh, members, I'm in your hands. Who would like to move a motion uh, on this record on on this application? Madam Chair, I think we're always pleased to see when an applicant listens to the comments of both the community and the committee. Uh, it's a significant change of the mood of the room since the last time. Um, with that, uh, Madam Chair, I'd be pleased to move this application be approved as applied for, finding that it meets the four tests of Planning Act, noting the support from local residents and residents association, and would make that approval conditional on that development proceeding in general accordance with the drawings provided and that a building permit issue within two years. Question on this recommendation? I see none. I have to reiterate Mr. Talowski's uh, comments. I chaired this the the meeting the time the last time you were here, and I have to say it's night and day. So we're happy. Well, we would add. You know, we really appreciate that the developer worked so well with uh, the community and our concerns, and uh, they can come up. And, you know, the end result is uh, really a much better product, uh, fitting for the. Uh, and that's a positive yeah. note on, on our part in terms of getting all the parties together and having everyone work together for the benefit of the community at, at large. So we appreciate you being here and we appreciate your comments, certainly. Mr. Um, so we, um, the recommendation is to approve subject to the stated conditions. All those in support? Your uh, application has been approved. Thank you, Mr. Capper. Thank you very much. So yes, this. perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So the, the last, oh, Mr. Chairman. I'll let you call for the night. So the, the we don't have any meeting uh, minutes to move. Do we do? Uh, okay. We do have, we do have minutes in November 29th, December 13th. Okay, uh, November 29th and December 13th. Will we all present for these? Uh, yeah. November 29th. I move the minutes of uh, November 29th and December 13th. Okay. All those in support? And uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All adjourned those. at eight. All those in support? Yeah. Adjourned at 8.26. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.